Hi everyone, I'm Benjamin Duday, the Spotlight Kid. Welcome to another episode of Album Explorations. Today we're going to shine the spotlight on one of the founding bands in the US power metal movement, the mighty Warlord. So Warlord was formed in 1980 by the driving forces of the band, guitarist Bill Destroyer Samus and drummer Mark Thunderchild Zonder in San Jose. And the band would eventually make their way to, Los An to the Los Angeles club scene. During this time, they came to the attention of Metal Blade Records owner Brian Slagle. Slagle was impressed with their approach and released their song Lucifer's Hammer on the label's metal compilation, Metal Massacre 2. This got the band more attention and praise, and they would go on to feature the song Mrs. Victoria on Metal Massacre 3. Brian Slagle would go on to sign the band to Metal Blade and they produced their debut six song EP mini album, the absolutely classic and kick ass Deliver Us in 1983. This got the band featured in Kerrang! and other publications, publications and expanded their fan base. The band then decided to hire out the Raymond Theatre to record and film 1984's killer album and VHS called And the Canons of Destruction Have Begun. What a cool, cool name. This performance was recorded without an audience and would be their first full-length album. It featured on vocals Rick Cunningham, a.k.a. Damien King II, the second, bassist Dave uh, Watry, a.k.a. Archangel or Archangel, uh, keyboardist Diane uh, Cornarens, a.k.a. Sentinel, and of course, Bill and Mark on guitar and drums, respectively. At this point, I'd like to add that I was planning to do an album explorations for these guys down the track at some point. But, you know, since the, the, the sad and untimely passing of, fo of founder Bill Samus the other day, I thought it was time to pay tribute to him and dive into one of my favorite albums he was a huge part of making. So with that said, let's dive into the metal masterpiece that is and the canons of destruction have begun. Track one, the beginning and Lucifer's hammer. The rain pours down on a dark and stormy night and the storyteller lays out the tale of the kingdom to come with some spooky keyboards to add to the mood. Then Lucifer's hammer comes in and hammers us in the face as the metal riffing and drum pummeling begins. Damien King II melodically sings the story which warns of a nuclear apocalypse and the downfall of Earth being entirely the fault of mankind. The performance is loose and raw, it works very well and everything has an epic grandeur to it that very few bands had, especially in the 80s LA scene. After the keyboard build up, we get Bill destroy at Samus to deliver us a face melting guitar solo. The sound is old school personified, so if that's your thing, then definitely check this out because it's absolutely fantastic. And, and right up that, that alley of old school. The song wraps up with some cool guitar lines and Rick, Damien King II, <laughs> imploring us to save us from ourselves. Very cool, very moody, awesome stuff. Track 2, Lost and Lonely Days. This one kicks off with a melody drenched and super catchy guitar and keyboard line over a cool, straight drum groove. Rick opens up the vocals, singing about a lost love and how things went from bliss to sorrow. This is performed with a fantastic and memorable melody. The emotion and feeling is being worn directly on their sleeves and the whole thing has a uniqueness that is both sort of familiar yet totally different from anybody else. Bill's solo is another display of classy skill and melodic progressive beauty and the song ends strongly just as it began. Another great track. Track 3, Black Mass. Doomy Black Sabbath worship is the order of the day with this one as it moves forward and into a Manowar-like groove. 
Damien King regales us of the dark tale of a black mass replete with covens and demons and Lucifer's kisses and evil men. You know, all the standard black mass shit. <laughs> The, the riff stays dark and moody with some cool guitar and bass runs thrown in throughout. Bill Solo is again another whole journey on its own. He's shredding his black mass bliss inducing goodness. The mass is completed with someone blessed in blood and, and, and the band hammering it home for us. Super cool. Track 4, Soliloquy. The keyboards open up loud and proud. The, the sound reminds me of the, the soundtrack of the movie Scarface and those intense keyboards every time Tony Mo Montana would get pissed off. You know? <laughs> um, anyway, the band join, join in hard, slow and heavy. Rick sings about the, the desperation of being alone in the world. No friends or loved ones to speak of. And just the ever-present longing. The melody is rich and it, and it builds so well. Truly epic stuff. The music, while definitely emotion drenched, has an almost triumphant feel, especially when he sings the line, I'm alone again, I'm alone again. Uh, that, 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 sorry, fucked it up. But anyway, the music is powerful and the solo comes in to complement it and, and you know, it really succeeds in doing so. It almost feels like um, musical tears, yet with the, the grandness still there, giving it an uplifting feel. The song wraps up with the, with the chorus and vocal harmonies building up with the band and falling away to the single voice, perpetually alone protagonist. So good. Five, track five, we have Aliens. An instantly catchy and groovy riff opens up then to get more complex and noty yet still super cool. The pace picks up as the verse starts and we get Rick singing about how the human race has forced it to focus itself in the wrong places and that our sort of futile search for aliens has failed to discover that aliens are already here. Something like that anyway. I might be way off, but that's what it seems like to me. Let me know in the comments if I got it totally wrong. Nevertheless, the song kicks along with more cool riffs and great drum fills. The riffs build up and then drop into a lead line solo movement. It's pretty proggy there for a while. Then to come back to the verse and chorus with the, with the guitar playing some variations underneath and leading us out of the song. Very cool. Track 6, 1984. This doomy instrumental is loaded with fast guitar and bass runs flying up and down and setting a, a dark, ominous mood that fits perfectly here on the album. The guitar mel melody progresses beautifully and this is another showcase of the talents of Bill Destroyer Tannis and his guitar wizardry. Then we get to track 7, Child of the Dad. This one rips into focus with a, a new wave of British heavy metal slash Iron Maiden like riff approach and a, and a kind of King Diamond like scream. Fast and furious and, and telling another dark tale. Rick Damien King here regales us of his connection to the Lord of Hell and all the various trappings that that involves. You know, these days the whole satanic thing feels pretty overdone and boring. But back then, it was pretty ballsy to write lyrics like this. The band charges forward at full force and delivers a hard-hitting performance. There's slightly less melody and grandiosity through this one, but it's no less catchy or memorable. It's another ripper. Bill Solo is shred-tastic, of course, and the band pummels <clears throat> and, and you know, ends with some eerie and haunting chords. So finally that brings us to track 8, Deliver Us From Evil. Eerie, otherworldly keys kick us off with stomping bass and drums. The guitar comes in and guides the riff into the supremely catchy and memorable vocal melodies. Everything immediately has that grand, epic power and scale that these guys really excel at. The song 
seems to be another doomsday song. However, this time, instead of a nuclear holocaust, it's more relating to it with a with the sort of religious connotations of the Christian rapture. With Rick sort of imploring to a higher power to deliver us from evil. In, you know, in complete contrast to the previous track, I must add. <laughs> the song is drowning though in grand melody and the band sounds fantastic with their raw epicness. Bill's tasty solo comes in after the band shifts gears downward slightly and it gives everything a, a more menacing feel. The choruses are furnished with vocal harmonies, guitar flourishes, which add to the whole power and feel, and the song ends triumphantly in this way. Awesome stuff. Great track. So that brings us to the end of this fantastic and classic album. So how would I rate this one? Well. The production is very raw and a bit weak at times, and the performance is a bit sloppy here and there. But the material is so strong and, and the passion is also clearly so baked into the performance that it makes it, it makes me almost not care about the production and sloppiness at all. I, I, I love all the songs on this album, I love the uniqueness of the music. Nobody sounds like these guys. Um, and you know, that's something very special. They definitely have a, a grandeur and power that really appeals to me, and not in the overly cheesy European power metal way. It's raw and harsh, yet beautiful and memorable. Even the, the sort of shitty production adds, adds a charm to it, in a way. So, with all that being said, I would give this one a very respectable 8 out of 10. Okay guys, that's it for today. Thanks for um, helping me shine the spotlight on another terrific band, for helping me to pay tribute to Bill Samus. You know, my deep condolences to all his family and friends and um, uh, just another sad loss in, 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 uh, in the sort of Halls of uh, metal, I guess, you know, Bill Samus has got his place uh, up there in, in Valhalla with all the other warriors of metal. Anyway, folks, please like and subscribe. And uh, from me, the Spotlight Kid, thanks for watching. Keep it metal and see you next time.